Let's give God thanksgiving right now for the fresh manna from heaven. Father, we just believe we receive right now our daily bread, the word of the living God, which is alive and powerful and is the incorruptible seed which we live and grow by in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to give us exactly what you would have us, your children, to hear right now. And we thank you for it. <clears throat> Let's acknowledge by faith the Lordship of Jesus over us and our families. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. Today, I hear and receive the word of the living God. Today, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, according to your word, that you open my ears to hear as the learned. And Father, according to your word, this word will not return void, but it will accomplish in me and for me what it is sent to do in Jesus' name. So the good, rich soil of our heart is the love of God. And we have been, since the first of the year, I think, um, learning from the Holy Spirit the parable of the sower. The second group of soil is stony ground, which we have learned is um, offenses, it's grudges, it's unforgiveness, it's strife, it's envy. And um, before we get into 1 Corinthians 13, I heard something that I want to share with you that I, I believe will also keep you in the right path. In James 3, this is what he says in verse 13. Who is a wise man and endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, now he's talking to the believer, so he's talking to you and to me. If you, say if I, if I have bitter envying and strife in my heart, he said, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, it's sensual, and it's of the devil. That word actually is demoniacal, which means it's literally from Satan. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And what this minister said was that strife is the manifest presence of the devil. So anytime that you're tempted to be in strife, what do we do? We give him no place. That's what the word says. Give Satan no place. So since we know that any type of strife, whether, and, and bring it down to your home level, because this is where you live. We're talking about husband, wife. We're talking about parents, children. We're, and you know, parents can be in strife with children, even little children. No, we train them up in the way they go, but we're never in strife with them because strife is from the devil. No parent has a right to be in strife with their child because strife is of the devil. So he said this, strife is the manifest presence of the devil. And he said division is the uh, division produces destruction. So the opposite of that, I thought about this, the opposite of 
uh, strife being the manifest presence of the devil, then let's look at the reciprocal of that. Then the love of God is the manifest presence of God. And for God to rule and reign in our homes, then we simply allow his love to flow in our hearts, to be in our hearts, and to flow through us to every member of our family. Love and where the presence of the Lord is, where love is, then there's going to be, if, if where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work, then let's look at the opposite of that. Then where the love of God rules and reigns, there is going to be every good work of God. So I, that just opened up to me, and I thought, oh, yes. So walk in love. Resist the devil. Resist strife when you're tempted to be in strife. Go to the scriptures. They give you the power. And just say, Lord, you are my helper in this. You help me to stay free from strife. You help me to stay free from envy and jealousy. You help me to walk in love. He is our helper, and he gives us this word for our good. So where the love of God is then, there's going to be every good thing, every good thing, praise God. And you, it starts with you. It starts with me. You make the choice to walk in love, to not be in strife with anyone. And what did the word tell us uh, in Luke 6? He says, love your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Bless them that curse you. And even in the epistles, he says, bless and curse not. And then he says, forgive and it shall be forgiven you. So this is what we as believers do, and we allow this word to grow in us to perfection. So let's jump over now to 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love of God. And I just continually thank God that I am healed and perfectly whole in Jesus' name, because it is written, who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that I being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes I was healed. And since I was healed, I am healed right now. <clears throat> so 1 Corinthians 13, let's, let's acknowledge this together. Love, the love of God. Say, I am the love of God. And the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I endure long, and I am patient and kind. I am never, never envious, nor do I boil over with jealousy. I am never boastful or vainglorious. I am never arrogant, conceited, or inflated with pride. And why? Because Everything we have, we receive from God. We have nothing to boast in of ourselves. Everything we have, whether it's um, things or whether it's uh, even the ability to pray, even the ability to confess the word, the wisdom of God, it all comes from him. We have nothing in us to boast of ourselves. We are never boastful or vainglorious. We are never arrogant, conceited, or inflated with pride. We are humble-minded. We are never rude or unmannerly. Say, I am never, never, never rude or unmannerly. And I never behave myself unbecomingly. Love, God's love in me, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. For I am not self-seeking. I am not touchy fretful, or resentful. I take no account of an evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. In other words, I forgive. 
I do not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness. I believe I rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. And it's, it's the love in you. It's not you. It's the love of God that's in you. I, um, let's see. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. I am ever ready to believe the best of every person. So yesterday, I gave you some scriptures about judging not. So let me read this one. This is so powerful. And these are our instructions. This is the word that he gives us to become a part of us so that we walk in this so that it becomes manifest in us. In Matthew 7, well, I gave you in Luke 6, 37, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. The law of sowing and reaping. Judge, okay, so then Matthew 7, verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you measure, it shall be measured to you again. And are you ready for this? And why do you behold the mote that is in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then shall you see clearly to cast out the moat out of your brother's eye. So he's saying, you have a beam in your own eye. You have to get rid of it before you can cast out this little thing out of your brother. And then in uh, Romans, chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, you condemn yourself. For that you judge, you that judge do the same things. So, you know, the word is true. You that judge do the same things. And maybe the way you're judge, you've judged another person, it doesn't look like you're doing the same things, but in some area of your life, you're doing the same things. So this is very important part of our love walk, is that we do not judge any person for anything. We do not judge ministers. What do we do? We love them, we pray for them, we bless them, and we forgive them. And let me tell you, I used to be honestly, probably the, the worst at judging other ministers. And uh, <laughs> I, I heard a minister recently sharing that about himself, and I thought, no, I, I was bad about it. You know, I, I put myself up above these great men of God and would judge different things that they did or said. And... Oh, I just praise God for his word of correction, for him chastening me in that area. And, you know, the word says, do not judge another man's servant. So we do not judge God's servants. And we do not touch God's anointed. We bless them. We pray for them. We love them. And we pray that God just blesses them and gives them revelation and empowers them to do his work on the earth. So just an area, well, it's happened to me many times, I'm sure. But I remember one time when uh, Frank made a mistake in our checking account. And, oh, checks were bouncing. Of course, that was back in the day when everybody did checks. And we might have just started on the, uh, 
you know, being able to debit money out, that took some work, you know, to make sure we didn't overdo. But, um, and so anyway, checks were bouncing left and right, and it was costing us $30 a check, I think. And so here, we didn't have it to begin with, and now we had less. And oh, I jumped on him. I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. First of all, I should have never been in strife with him over anything that had to do with money because the love of money is the root of all evil. And then I should not have I should not have jumped on him for making that error. And so I judged him. And I was very harsh about it. And because my math has always been meticulous. And I was always just so spot on with my checks and all of that, you know. Does that not sound like pride? Oh my, wow, I repent even now, Father, of that awful pride because even in that, we have to trust the Lord to help us. So, do you know, a couple of weeks later, checks started bouncing. And I went through the checkbooks. It wasn't his era this time. It was mine. And I think we had more checks bounce than he had even had. And I just asked him to forgive me. But you know, I should have never done it to begin with. And here's the key about the word, is to correct us so that we don't ever get caught in those traps of Satan. So I judged him for making the error, then I turned around and made the same error. Why? Because the word is true. Judge not, and you will not be judged. So let's just stop it right there. You know, ask the Lord to show you anybody that you have judged, any minister that you have judged. You know, I'm going to bring this up too. I know that uh, many ministers have been judged for the jets that they fly. But the truth is, is it's God's will for all of his children to have jets. And how much more should he provide the best for his children? Who are we serving? We're serving the God of the most... The God who created the heavens and the earth and all the cattle on a thousand hills are his, all the gold and the silver is his. And is he stingy with it? No, he is generous with his wealth. I believe that all of these men, I thank God for these ministers that stretched out in faith and received these jets these airplanes received their pilot's licenses. I thank God for Brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland, because it was because of his boldness to believe God that Frank heard that word and stretched out and believed God himself for our planes. And so, you know, we ought to rejoice with them. So when... Satan tempts you to be in strife over another minister's prosperity. Prosperity is of God. It's God's will that his people prosper. And these people are just living in the blessing that belongs to them. It is right for them to be blessed. Do you remember the woman, the Shunammite woman, and Elijah uh, would come through there, and she perceived that he was a man of God. Do you know what she did? She built him his own chamber, and it was furnished to the finest. This woman was wealthy. She didn't give him bare minimum. She gave him the best. And because she perceived that he was a man of God. Saints, wherever you go to church, if whoever your man of God is, you bless that man of God. Give him the best. And even above your tithe that you put in the church, all that tithe doesn't go to him. The tithe goes to help provide for the building that you meet in, the utilities 
that pay that are provided for you. And so I encourage you to bless your man of God. Just hand him money because he is a servant of God. When you hand him money, do you know what happens? It's like handing God money because he says, if you receive, whoever you receive in my name, you receive me. So I encourage you to, uh, rather than judge and criticize and condemn these uh, ministers that are teaching us prosperity, that are living in it themselves, thank God they got a hold of this. Thank God that they were bold enough to stand up against religion or as one person put it, churchianity. Uh, there's a difference in Christianity and churchianity. There's a difference in Christianity and religion because Christianity is the blessing of God on us and us receiving that blessing and walking in that blessing and being blessed far beyond what we can ask or think. So bless those ministers that fly jets. Bless them. Speak blessings over them. Thank God that they got a hold of the truth. And if they turn around and say, uh, you know, which I, I don't think many of them do, but if any of them do say, oh, I got this plane and it needs a new engine, well then bless him. Pray for him to have the money for it. Don't condemn him. Say, Father, I, I pray that you bless that minister and give him a plane that works perfectly. Give them the best of the land. You pray for them to have the best. You know what's going to happen? God's going to see to it that the best comes to you. But do it from your heart. Whatever you do, do it from your heart. As unto the Lord. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord and I thank God for this rich bread from heaven today. And it grows up in you and me now. In Jesus' name.